Let's start with the main character. In this game series, Kratos is a mortal-born demigod Spartan warrior with a vendetta against Ares. Now, in Greek mythology, there is a character named Kratos, but that's where the similarities end. Kratos in Greek mythology was never mortal, never Spartan, and never had a vendetta against any of the gods. He was born the god of power and strength, son of the titan Pallas, the titan of battle, and the goddess Styx, primordial goddess of the river Styx. He is also an ally to the gods, not their enemy. Oh, beast! I will send you back to the depths of Hades! Since Kratos says, I will send you back to the depths of Hades, I'm guessing these are supposed to be the undead Greek beings known as Frikolakas. I know they're not shades, because those appear later in the game as wraiths, so assuming these are Vrikolakas, Vrikolakas are not organized soldiers who wield weapons. They're honestly a lot more like traditional zombies, including the fact that they eat human flesh, which they don't seem to do in this game. I know this is gonna shock people, but there are actually no random magical red orbs that increase people's stats in Greek mythology. If Kratos just picked up a Gorgon eye, shouldn't it be turning him to stone? I mean, that's what they do, and he obviously looked at it. Also, Gorgon eyes don't grant you health. Gorgon blood does. It's actually kind of funny how close they came to being accurate there. Sign it. Save me. Okay, so in this game, the Hydra seems to be a kaiju-sized, three-headed sea dragon, whereas in the actual myth, it's a roughly human-sized, nine-headed land snake. Also, it was defeated by Heracles, not Kratos. The Hydra's breath is supposed to be fatally poisonous, which does not seem to be the case here. In the myth, the final Hydra head was actually immortal. Even Heracles couldn't find a way to kill it, so he ended up burying it alive under a rock. As we speak, Athens is on the verge of destruction. It is the will of Ares, my great city fall. Zeus has forbidden the gods from waging war on each other. Zeus never forbade the gods from waging war on each other. Heck, several of them openly waged war on each other during the Trojan War. Since this is Athens being invaded by followers of Ares, I can only assume this is meant to be the Peloponnesian War. But if that is the case, there should be an army of Spartans attacking the city instead of just a bunch of monsters. Man, can you imagine how much more interesting that would have made the story? What a conflict that would have been for Kratos? Missed opportunity. Several minotaurs appear in this game, but in Greek mythology, there was only ever one minotaur. The minotaur was slain by the hero Theseus, not Kratos. Aphrodite. I offer you the power to freeze your enemies where they stand. But you must earn such a gift. Medusa, the queen of the Gorgons. Bring me her head, Kratos, and I will give you the ability to wield its power. Medusa does not have a snake body for a lower half, despite how cool that idea is. Also, since Athena's the one who cursed Medusa and the one who ultimately assisted in bringing about her death, it would make a lot more sense for Athena to be giving you this task rather than Aphrodite. Also, you don't need Aphrodite to give you the ability to wield its power. All you need to do to turn someone to stone with Medusa's head is point it at someone and hope they look into its eyes. That's what Perseus did. <laughs> Getting turned to stone by Medusa's gaze doesn't just wear off. Well, I guess unless you're Atlas. Medusa was slain by Perseus, not Kratos. How is it that these Gorgons are able to turn Kratos to stone during times when he isn't even looking at them? And during other times when he clearly is looking at them, he doesn't turn to stone. 
Well, it seems in this game, instead of turning to stone by looking at a Gorgon, you turn to stone by being within the gaze's area of effect during certain times. Yeah, that's not in the myth. Okay, I was under the assumption that only the first Gorgon slain was Medusa, and all these other ones were simply lesser Gorgons. However, according to this text, they are all Medusa. And that is highly inaccurate, considering there was only ever one Medusa in Greek mythology. God of War. Ares and the other Greek gods are not gigantic. Also, when Ares actively participates in a war, he brings his companions Deimos, Phobos, Kidimos, Eris, and Enyo with him. And also his chariot. <laughs> Ares' army seems to largely consist of undead warriors and harpies, both of which are creatures from the underworld. We find out later that Hades is actively against what Ares is doing, seeing as he helps us in our quest to kill him, so... Why isn't Hades reigning in this insane amount of underworld monsters that seem to be escaping the underworld and joining Ares? Get your shit together, Hades. Oh, now Ares has shades in his army, another type of creature from the underworld. Seriously, Hades, do your job! Lord Zeus. I offer you the power of the greatest of all the gods, the father of Olympus. I offer you the power of Zeus. Take this weapon, Kratos. Take this power and use it to defeat your enemy. So Zeus basically gives Kratos the ability to throw lightning bolts like he does. However, Zeus's lightning bolts are handmade by Hephaestus and the Cyclopes, so technically, if Kratos is wielding lightning the same way Zeus does, then every time he uses up the bolts he has on hand, he'd have to put in an order for a new batch and wait for Hephaestus to follow up. Ancient Athens did not have some giant temple to an oracle. It did, however, have an oracle well. Also, not sure why you would have statues of Nike, the goddess of victory, outside an oracle temple. Nike was never associated with that kind of thing, and the only known statue of Nike in Athens was at the Athenian Acropolis as part of the Athena Nike statue. The oracle spoke of Pandora's box. Can it be real? The box exists. It is the most powerful weapon a mortal can wield. Uh, no it isn't. It's not a weapon at all and does not grant the power to kill gods. It was simply a container for all the evils of the world, which Zeus unleashed on humanity by tricking Pandora into opening it. Also, fun fact, in the oldest version of the story, it wasn't even a box. It was a pithos jar. You must find the sirens, Kratos. Only they can guide you to Kronos, the Titan. A Titan lives? Well, all the Titans live, they're not dead, they're simply locked in Tartarus, and so is Kronos for that matter. He was never sent to some desert of lost souls with a giant temple on his back, he was chopped into pieces and tossed into Tartarus. None of the Titans can die, considering the fact that they're immortal, just like the gods. <laughs> Sirens do not look like that. They are half woman, half bird. Also, they do not hang out in some desert of lost souls. They hang out on a small island in the Mycenaean Strait. Also, Kratos can clearly hear them singing, which means he should now be under their spell and thus under their control, but there's no sign of that. Neither this temple nor the man who apparently built it are in Greek mythology. Okay, that's some Moses stuff right there. Wrong mythology. Artemis. I offer you the very blade I used to slay a titan. Artemis never used a blade to slay a titan. 
The Titan War took place before Artemis was even born, and, as stated earlier, none of the Titans were slain. Also, Artemis uses a silver bow. She is most certainly not known for using a huge, thick, purple sword. Not sure what use a goddess of the hunt would even get out of that kind of weapon. Hades has never been known to have a shield. Zeus and Athena have, sure, but not Hades. Ah, so now we're doing the Shield of Zeus, so you probably think there's no inaccuracies to point out. Well, you'd be wrong, because the Shield of Zeus, also called Aegis, ended up being passed down to Athena and had Medusa's face stuck onto it. Not seeing that here. The only three-headed dog in Greek mythology is Cerberus. There is for sure not some race of tiny dogs that morph into Cerberus clones over time. Also, these dogs seem to have club tails, and Cerberus was sometimes depicted with a snake tail, but never a clubbed one. In what reality does Poseidon leave his trident sitting in some temple for any asshole to take? It's like his most prized possession and symbol. He's pretty much never seen without it. Also, it's a weapon of incredible power, and yet it's never even used as a weapon in this game. All right, I counted, and this door has exactly nine muses. Just like in the myth. Props. This hidden chamber has magical sand which contains blessings from Zeus, which is a bit strange considering Zeus is in no way affiliated with sand. You'd think it would be electricity or eagle feathers or something. Uh, centaurs do not have Baraka-style faces. They simply have human upper halves and horse lower halves. There is no gigantic robot minotaur in Greek mythology, even though that'd be really cool. Lord Hades. Yo, what's up with this Doom Eternal demonic look Hades seems to have in this game? Hades isn't some monster, he's just as human looking as the other Olympians. Satyrs aren't exactly disciplined warriors. They're basically just a bunch of mischief makers, party goers, and sexual deviants. It's insanely unlikely you'd ever see one actually challenge somebody to a real fight. The blades of chaos, forged in the foulest depths of Hades. Once attached, the chains remained so, chained and seared to the flesh, a part of the bearer's body a permanent reminder of Kratos' pledge. In return, ultimate power. These Blades of Chaos are not a thing in Greek mythology. They've built this temple to offer prayers to Athena! This entire village stands as an affront to Lord Ares! Burn this village! Burn it to the ground! For anyone wondering, yes, there was in fact a huge rivalry between Ares and Athena, both in Greek mythology and in real-world history among their followers. And Ares' followers did include the Spartans. So, honestly, this plotline seems well-researched, and I have no issues with it. Bro, Pandora's box is not nearly that big. Kratos, your quest is at an end. You are the first mortal to ever reach Pandora's box. 
No, he isn't. Pandora had it first. Hence the name Pandora's Box. You are becoming all I'd hoped you'd be, Kratos. Now, with your wife and child dead, nothing will hold you back. You'll become even stronger. You will become death itself. Well, that job's already taken, Ares. You might want to have a talk with a certain guy named Thanatos. Kratos' life faded, and his cursed soul was cast into the fires of Hades. Kratos literally dies here, and yet neither Thanatos nor Hermes shows up to bring his soul to the underworld. Come on, guys, get moving! This is probably why Ares thinks that job is available. And Kratos fell into the underworld, the river Styx beckoning below. Freshly deceased souls do not fall straight into the river Styx. They are brought to the shore of the Styx, where they are met by Charon so he can ferry them across. Also, are you sure that's the River Styx? Because it's looking like it's on fire, and that wouldn't be the River Styx, that would be the River Phlegathon. Wow, the Underworld is looking an awful lot like hell! Which would make sense if this were Tartarus, but it is not. When you die in Greek mythology, you can't just leave the underworld. That's not how it works. Sure, there's a chance, but only if you get permission from Hades first, and that very rarely happens. Plus, where the heck was Cerberus during all that? It's his literal job to prevent this kind of thing. Kratos. Return, but too late. Ares has taken Athens. There is no more hope. No. The Peloponnesian War lasted about 30 years. Somehow, I don't think this game's events have lasted that long. Zeus! Do you see now what your son can do? You cast your favor on Athena, but her city lies in ruins before me. And now, even Pandora's box is mine! Would you have me use it against Olympus itself? Ares is certainly bloodthirsty, and reckless, and kind of a douche, but he never actually turned against Zeus or Olympus itself. Heck, he wasn't even part of the coup against Zeus that happened at one point, and even Athena was part of that. After thousands of years, Pandora's box was finally open. It's been opened before. By Pandora. Gee, I must have missed the Greek myth where Ares started growing mechanical spider legs out of his back. I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. Ares bleeds red blood in this scene, even though the deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. Athena, rid me of the memories that haunt me still. You have done well, Kratos. Though we mourn the death of our brother, the gods are indebted to you. We promised your sins would be forgiven, and so they are. But we never promised to take away your nightmares. No man, no god could ever forget the terrible deeds you have done. Hey, here's a thought. Why don't you just give him some water from the River Lethe? That stuff is literally used to remove people's memories. Here, we see the throne of Ares in a room on its own, but all of the gods' thrones are supposed to be together in a semicircle at the top of Mount Olympus. By defeating Ares, Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new god of war. Kratos, in Greek mythology, was born a god. He didn't become one by defeating another god. Also, he wasn't the god of war. He was the god of power and strength. However, Kratos soon found himself alone on Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. Kratos was neither alone nor shunned on Olympus. He actually had three siblings on Olympus, Nike, Bia, and Zealous. And because he and his family were the first gods to join Zeus after the Titan War, Zeus actually granted them the highest positions in his regime. He had found a new family in the warriors of Sparta, 
gaining solace from his past and calling to battle. Enough, Kratos! With every city you destroy, the wrath of Olympus grows. Soon I will no longer be able to protect you. Kratos in mythology was indeed very brutal and merciless and constantly seeking out violence. However, when Kratos committed atrocities, he actually did them in service of Zeus, not in defiance of him. And when he was questioned by other gods, he would openly state that this was the way of Zeus. By the way, fun fact, Athena in this game is voiced by the same woman who voices Athena in Age of Mythology. Nice. For anyone wondering, yes, Zeus does have the ability to strip away someone's godly powers. He's done that to both Apollo and Poseidon at certain points. Creating living statues is more of a Hephaestus thing than a Zeus thing. Also, while the Colossus of Rhodes was an actual thing in history, there are sadly no mythical stories of it coming alive. It'd be totally awesome if there were, but no such luck. Kratos. I do not need your help, Zeus. I can take down this beast. I offer you more than help, Kratos. I offer you power. I offer you the Blade of Olympus. It was this blade that ended the Great War and defeated the Titans. Uh, no it wasn't. This Blade of Olympus is not a thing in Greek mythology. The Colossus of Rhodes was destroyed by an earthquake, not an epic battle with Kratos. Shocker, I know. The gods are petty and pathetic, and your rule is weak. I grow tired of this insolence. I am the king of Olympus. And it is my way that is the way of the gods. You must vow to forever serve me. I serve no one. Kratos and his siblings actually did pledge their eternal loyalty to Zeus. And as stated before, they did it pretty quickly. As the life drained out of Kratos, the arms of Hades reached out to claim their prize. Kratos dies yet again, and still Hermes doesn't show up to take him to the underworld. Yes, I know Thanatos died between games, but Hermes is still very much alive, so where the heck is he? Death is an escape, Kratos. You are a warrior of Sparta, not a coward. Only a coward accepts death. I am no coward. Once again, Kratos is miraculously able to just will himself back to life, without permission from Hades, or a death cure from Asclepius, or an apple of immortality, or anything, really. Hold up, did this regular mortal man actually survive a blast of godly power from freaking Zeus? Who the hell is this guy? And what of you, my lord? Turn back to Olympus, beast! I must face Zeus! <laughs> The last mortal who tried riding a Pegasus up to Olympus didn't quite get what he wanted, Kratos. Maybe rethink the strategy a bit. Your only hope is to find the Sisters of Fate and travel back through time to the moment Zeus betrayed you. The Sisters of Fate do not have the ability to travel through time. They can manipulate the future, sure, but the past isn't something they can change. To succeed, you will need more help than I can give. My titan brother slumbers deep inside his mountain prison. This titan brother Gaia is referring to is later revealed to be Typhon, 
While Typhon was indeed imprisoned under a mountain, he was neither a titan nor Gaia's brother. He was the son of Gaia and Tartarus. The titans were children of Gaia and Uranus. Honestly, Kratos' strategy probably should have included freeing and teaming up with Typhon, considering he nearly took down Olympus on his own. In this game, Typhon and Prometheus are both found at the same mountain, but in mythology, Typhon was imprisoned under Mount Etna, and Prometheus was imprisoned in the Caucasus Mountains. Who has placed you in this torment? You did! Kratos and his sister Bia were the ones tasked with carrying out Prometheus' punishment. Kratos even tortured and mocked Prometheus for his own amusement. As punishment, he made me mortal and condemned me to be savagely consumed every day by this cursed bird. Also, Prometheus says here that Zeus made him mortal, but that didn't happen in the myth. The whole reason his body healed every day was because he was immortal. Something I forgot to mention in the last video, Kratos kills several Gorgons in these games, and yet for some reason he can't take their eyes to increase his health, even though he can do that with the Gorgon eyes he finds in chests. These are all Gorgons, guys. Even if you're still referring to them all as Medusa, those would still be Gorgons. Please, Ghost of Sparta, release me from my torment! I must burn all the fires of Olympus. This is the only way. Kill me, Kratos. Kill me. Prometheus says that the only way to free him from this prison is by burning and killing him. But in the myth, he was eventually freed by Heracles during one of his labors, and he didn't do any of that. He just broke the chains. Rhea commanded the eagle to secret us on the way. He was taken to an island far beyond the watchful eyes of Kronos. Baby Zeus was not taken to an island by an eagle. Rhea hid him in Mount Ida, where he was taken care of by a goat, a golden dog, and Rhea's servants. The Titans being gigantic is a common misconception. They are actually the same size as the gods, who are usually the same size as humans. Rhea and Kronos are also the same size. If Kronos was truly this much bigger than her, then I shudder to think about how they conceived their children. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. No, some of the Titans went to Zeus's side in the war, and nothing bad happened to them. Well, except Prometheus, but there was a different reason for that. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. Apparently it's called a wild Cerberus, but there is only one Cerberus in Greek mythology, and he is very much domesticated. Kratos kills this siren Black Bolt style by covering its mouth and causing it to explode from the inside. But siren songs do not create shock waves, they simply induce hypnosis. In Greek myth, there were two or three sirens max, but we encounter way more than that in this series. The steeds of time are not a thing in Greek mythology. Fools who try, you would be the last I would expect to seek an audience with the Sisters of Fate. And you are the last one I would expect to become a servant of the Fates. Theseus was never a servant of the Fates. He's really not that kind of guy. Theseus was killed by Lycomedes, not Kratos. By the gods, it is true. I have fought my way through the guardians of Hades and rolled my way out of the fires of torment to change my fate. My god, has everyone escaped from the underworld? Hades does not do his job at all in this series. Apparently these little fluttering bird enemies are supposed to be nymphs. These are not nymphs. 
Nymphs are beautiful humanoid nature spirits, and they certainly aren't explosive. Okay, who let Michael Bay into the design room? Is that a lava rock minotaur? Well, that's cool, but inaccurate. God of war. Jason. That beast took him. Jason was not killed by a knockoff Cerberus. He was actually very anticlimactically killed when the stern of his own ship fell on his head. Uh, the Golden Fleece is not a warrior's pauldron. It is, as the name would suggest, a fleece. This Golden Fleece has the power to deflect approaching weapons and thrust them back to those who deliver them. Reflecting a Gorgon's gaze does not cause whoever sees the reflection to turn to stone. We know this because Perseus looked at Medusa's reflection in his shield in order to defeat her. Euryle is not that big, and does not have a snake lower body. She and Stheno are actually often depicted with wings. Also, she lives on an island with her sisters, not in an awesome temple filled with booby traps. Also, also, I know a lot of you guys are expecting me to say that Medusa's sisters don't have the ability to turn people to stone, but actually in the older versions of the myths, they do. So, yeah. Are you watching me now, sisters? Give me a sign! Am I the great Perseus to kill this fallen god to receive an audience with you? There's a lot to love about Perseus in this game. He has his Helm of Invisibility, his reflective shield, and he's voiced by Harry Hamlin, the actor who played Perseus in Clash of the Titans. Nice. But since we're nitpickers in these videos, Perseus never sought out the fates, he was never slain in battle, he doesn't have his winged shoes, and his sword doesn't seem to be the correct shape. Also, Perseus looks a lot younger than Theseus in this game, which is pretty weird considering Perseus was born about four generations before Theseus. We know this because Perseus is the great-great-grandfather of Heracles, and Heracles encounters Theseus during one of his labors. The shield of Perseus seems to have a Medusa face design on it. That wouldn't be Perseus' shield, that would be Athena's shield. You will never make it across. You think you can, but you cannot. Do you hear me? It's my wings that will make it across. It is my test! Do you not know who I am? Have you not heard of Icarus? Oh, I most certainly have, Icarus. Which leads me to ask, how the heck are you so old and how are your wings still in one piece? Did you not fly too close to the sun when you were just a boy and result in your wings falling to pieces and you yourself dying? I imagine that's the exact story you're referencing since that's the only thing you're famous for. This is confusing. Honestly, it would have made a lot more sense if this was a crazy old Daedalus who was trying to get the sisters to bring back his son. Who breaks my chains of torment? Atlas does not reside under the earth holding it up. He holds up the sky in a lush green area near the Hesperides tree. The war between the Titans and the Olympians forged the landscape of the mortal world. Hades is wearing his helmet here, and yet it is not turning him invisible. A swim. Atlas does not have four arms. Also, he seems to have no genitalia here, which is a bit weird considering he has produced children in mythology. I'm not saying I want to see that, I'm just saying, Atlas ain't no Kendall. Hades does not have his bident, Poseidon does not have his trident, and Zeus does not have his master lightning bolt. These weapons were given to the gods specifically for use in the Titan War. The ashes of the phoenix. Only fire will set him free. Wait, but in order to become ash in the first place, a phoenix bursts into flames. It should have already been reborn from the ashes. 
Why would it need more fire to be reborn from the ashes that resulted from it lighting itself on fire? The game refers to this creature as the Kraken, which is another common misconception ever since the Clash of the Titans movie. In Greek myth, this creature is actually called Cetus. The Kraken is a Norse sea monster. If you relent, Zeus will torment you still. He will not rest knowing you live. And when you die, his brother Hades will see that your soul is tortured for all eternity. Will he, though? He's already let me out of the underworld twice, along with my rival and thousands of undead creatures. It's not like he can pass that job off to the Furies since they died in a prequel game. I really don't think we need to worry about Hades doing literally anything. Cetus was killed by Perseus, not Kratos. Also, how come we couldn't just use the Gorgon head to turn it to stone, seeing as that's exactly what Perseus did? We've been expecting you. Out of my way. Your resolve is admirable. Even if it is misguided. None can change their destiny, Kratos. We sisters determine the fate of all. It was I who deemed that the Titans lose the Great War. And I, who have allowed you to come this far. It is not your destiny to kill Zeus. You no longer control my destiny. She doesn't? How? You never gave any reason why she wouldn't. I mean, the fates constantly control the fates of all beings. Why would they even let him come this far if they don't want him to win? Why don't they just cut his thread? Are they unable to because he died and then he came back? That was never said. And they still almost change his fate during his fight with them. Also, was his thread cut and then glued back together two separate times? Oh, this is by far the most confusing plot point in the whole series. Plotto weaves the thread of life for every mortal god and titan. The fates in this game have some... <laughs> interesting designs, which are quite different from their usual ones. Stop! Zeus and Athena bleed red blood in this game, even though the deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. You cannot do this, Kratos! Athena's main weapons are supposed to be a spear and a shield. She does typically have a sword at her hip, but not dual swords. A fear that drove Zeus to kill you. His own son. His son. Kratos is not a son of Zeus, despite how common that condition is. His father is Pallas, the titan of battle. We have faced far worse than this one fallen mortal. Here, we see Zeus's throne all by itself, when it is supposed to be surrounded by the other eleven thrones of Olympus. Also, no hearth of Hestia? How dare you. Hestia is bestia. Gaia is the living personification of the entire Earth itself, so if she wants to get to the top of Mount Olympus, why doesn't she just manifest herself there instead of climbing up the tedious way? Kratos had been called upon by the gods to confront an unthinkable evil, unleashed on the city of Attica by the invading Persian army. I'm guessing this battle is supposed to be the second Persian invasion of Greece, except Kratos stops the Persians from taking Attica in this game, when in actual history, Attica fell to the Persians. Not sure how a Cyclops would be allied with the Persians in their invasion, considering Cyclopes are from Greek culture and do not appear in Persian culture.
And now they've got a basilisk! Again, not sure how that's in the Persian army, considering basilisks are from European folklore and inspired by North African creatures, and Persia is located in southwestern Asia. Now, it's tricky to determine what a basilisk should look like, since they've been depicted several different ways, but they are typically said to be reptilian and sometimes said to breathe fire, which does seem to be the case here, so props. However, a basilisk is also supposed to be able to cause death with a single glance, which clearly isn't the case here. I honestly don't think bringing a basilisk into an oceanside siege is very smart, considering you're surrounded by water and basilisks die instantly upon seeing their own reflection as evidenced by the tales of St. George and Alexander the Great. For anyone wondering, a nefrit is a type of jinn or genie. They are demonic spirits from Arabian legend, sometimes said to be comprised of deadly fire. And all of that seems to be the case here, so cool. In the darkness, Morpheus, the god of dreams, awakened to a world where he and only he wielded power. What? How does only Morpheus have power in a world of darkness? What about Nyx, the goddess of night? Or Morose, the god of doom? Or Hypnos, the god of sleep? Or Eris, the goddess of chaos? Or maybe Erebus, the literal god of darkness? Why would the god of dreams suddenly be the top dog? Heck, Morpheus isn't even the only god of dreams. He has two brothers. The land was slowly overrun by a black fog that engulfed everything it touched. Kinda weird, considering Morpheus isn't the god of fog, that would be Aklas. <laughs> Apparently these guys are supposed to be shades. Shades in Greek mythology are the spirits of the dead that reside in the underworld. They aren't evil, fog-formed minions of Morpheus. Morpheus doesn't reign over the dead. I looked it up, and turns out these creatures are banshees. That's strange, considering banshees are from Celtic mythology, not Greek. No idea how they'd be connected to Morpheus. They're also typically depicted with bloody tears running down their faces. These creatures are called Morpheus beasts, and they are not a thing in Greek mythology. The closest creature that they seem to resemble is maybe a manticore, but I'm pretty sure that's not what they're supposed to be, considering manticores appear in God of War Ascension and look quite different. Here, it says that Boreas leads the path of the Sun Chariot, but Boreas is the North Wind, and a later part of this very game specifically states that the Sun rises in the East and sets in the West, so... What part of that would involve Boreas? This area depicts three horses who pull the chariot of Helios, but in mythology, Helios has four horses pulling his chariot. The temple on which Kratos stood was the sun chariot of Helios, the very chariot that the fire steeds pulled across the sky every day allowing the brilliance of Helios to shine down on all mankind. Wait, so the whole temple is his chariot? Well, that's a really cool and creative idea, but unfortunately ancient Greek artwork would suggest that the chariot of Helios is merely... a chariot. This temple on which you stand is the chariot of Helios. Without their master to reign them, the fire steeds have driven the sun chariot. Into the earth. Why don't you just have Apollo take over the chariot? You know, like he did in the myths? And without Helios, there is no one to keep Morpheus from seizing permanent power. Many of the gods have fallen into a deep slumber. Soon, all will succumb to the black grip of Morpheus. 
Seriously, where the hell is Hypnos in all this? He's the god of sleep and father of Morpheus. Somebody tell that lazy bum to get out here and be a parent. Okay, not so much an inaccuracy as just a question, but why on earth are the servants of Helios attacking Kratos while Kratos is trying to help Helios? What the hell is their motivation? These enemies, known in the game as Hyperion Guards, are not in Greek mythology. The Titan Atlas has been freed from the pits of Tartarus, and has taken my brother Helios from his rightful place in the sky. Atlas was never in Tartarus. Right after the Titan War, Zeus had Atlas hold up the sky for all eternity. Partially because the four Titans who had been passively using their powers to hold it up had been thrown in Tartarus. Helios holds within him the power of the sun. A power so great it can destroy the world. It cannot be trusted in the hands of a Titan. But Helios is a Titan. Granted, he's not first generation, but neither is Atlas. Both of them are second generation Titans, and so are you. So your casual bigotry is completely unwarranted, Eos. Triton doesn't really use a lance. He has pretty much always been depicted with a trident, much like his father Poseidon. What the heck is this? Is this supposed to be a minotaur? Based on the appearance of its face and the positions of its horns, it honestly looks more like a ram-headed monster. And that doesn't match up with any of the creatures in Greek myth. As the steeds pulled Kratos away from the grip of Morpheus, they crossed into the underworld. But in the land of the dead, they could go no further. For these beings of light were not welcome in Hades. Beings of light are not welcome in Hades? Then pray tell, how is it that Persephone, the goddess of springtime, keeps hanging out down there? Kratos found himself on the very edge of Hades, the land where no mortal had set foot. Except for Orpheus, Odysseus, Psyche, Aeneas, Theseus, Pirithus, and Heracles. Charon's ferry is supposed to pick up souls at the shores of the dead, not some random structure in the middle of one of the rivers. Charon does not use a scythe. He is typically depicted with either a pole or an oar. And don't tell me that can't be used as a weapon, because he's beat some ass with it. <laughs> Zeus didn't really have a gauntlet. The only weapons he used were his thunderbolts, his master bolt, and the shield Aegis. In fact, gauntlets weren't really a thing at all in ancient Greece. No, no, that didn't happen. Hephaestus wasn't even born yet at that point. Apparently, these Gorgons are called Gorgon Queens, even though Medusa is supposed to be the Gorgon Queen. Heck, they even say that in God of War 1. Medusa. The Queen of the Gorgons. Kratos somehow escapes from Tartarus without encountering any of the Hecatonkeries who are supposed to be guarding it. Charon and Persephone bleed red blood in this game, even though the deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. 
exactly is Kratos able to kill Charon in this game? He's an immortal being, considered by many to be a god. This game takes place before Kratos got the god-killing powers from Pandora's box, so what gives? Okay, so apparently this later version of the Morpheus Beast is actually called a Sphinx. No, that's not a Sphinx. The Greek Sphinx has the head of a woman, body of a lion, and the wings of a bird. It's actually kind of amazing considering there was a perfectly accurate Sphinx statue on Charon's boat earlier. The gods on Olympus failed me too, Kratos. I was betrayed by Zeus and tricked by my husband Hades. Now I am to stay in the underworld as queen of the dead, to serve the fallen and care for them as my own children. Wait. Persephone is in the underworld right now? Then why wasn't it winter when we were above ground earlier? In Greek myth, winter is literally caused by the time Persephone spends in the underworld every year. You referenced that earlier in this very game, hi? I released Atlas. You? As you were pathetically disarming yourself, Atlas completed the task I set him out to do. With the power of the sun in his hands, it is only a matter of time before he destroys the pillar that holds the world. Persephone is not an evil goddess. Also, even in the myths where she was kidnapped by Hades, she did seem to eventually grow to care for him. Spartan, witness the end. There are several Greek deities with wings, but Persephone is not one of them. Also, I can't help but wonder, is this supposed to be Persephone taking her true form? Because if it is, then Kratos should have been incinerated, because he's mortal at this point. And in Greek mythology, mortals cannot survive looking upon a god's true form. If that's not what they're doing here, then I still have to ask, how come Persephone doesn't just take her true form during the fight for an easy win? Your suffering will never end, Ghost of Sparta. Again, how is Kratos able to kill Persephone at this point in time? I mean, even if you want to try to argue that Charon might not technically be a god, Persephone is definitely a goddess. So how can he kill her when he hasn't opened Pandora's box yet? Can anyone explain it to me? Anyone! As the sun chariot rose higher in the sky, and the might of Helios shone once again on the world, Morpheus retreated to the shadows. Okay, again, not really an inaccuracy, but how disappointing is it that we never actually fight Morpheus in this game? I mean, seriously, one of Kratos' main motivations at this point is to rid himself of the nightmares that haunt him, and Morpheus is the great god of dreams and nightmares. They could have done something with that. These Atlantean-looking enemies are apparently called Tritons. In the myths, Triton is not a title or a race of creatures. Triton is simply the name of Poseidon's son and heir. Many people these days know him as King Triton. These little wretch enemies are not a thing in Greek mythology. That's not exactly how Scylla looks in the myths. Granted, she's been depicted a few different ways. Sometimes she's a giant seven-headed sea serpent. Sometimes she has dog heads instead of snake heads. Sometimes she's a woman with six dogs protruding from her body. And sometimes it's some combination of those. Either way, it's very different from what we see here. Also, Scylla doesn't hang out near Atlantis. She's pretty much always at the entrance of the Mycenaean Strait across from Charybdis. Him, 
Not sure if this counts as an inaccuracy, but why would the Atlanteans be attacking their own people? They're not mindless monsters. Well, according to Plato, Atlantis was actually founded by a group of people who were half-god, half-human. How oh, I have missed you, Kratos. What treachery is this? Another trick of the gods? No, my son. It is me. Kratos' mother was not some mortal woman. She was the personification of the River Styx. We do not have much time. Kratos, your brother does not have much time. Deimos. Kratos in mythology did have a brother, but he wasn't named Deimos. He was Zealous, the god of jealousy. The only character in Greek mythology named Deimos is the god of terror. And that Deimos is a son of Ares and Aphrodite. No direct relation to Kratos. <laughs> Callisto in mythology was actually one of the huntresses of Artemis who was tricked into sleeping with Zeus. She ended up getting transformed into a bear by Artemis as punishment for breaking her vow of celibacy. Maybe her transforming into a monster in this game is supposed to be a nod to that? I'm not sure. Harpies do not have fiery, explosive abilities in Greek mythology. Alright, so this game has some kind of volcano-based titan named Thera. This character is not in Greek mythology at all. There is a real-world Greek volcano named Thera, but that's about it. There were only ever two Minotaur horns in mythology, yet Kratos finds several more than that in this game. Also, Minotaur horns have nothing to do with fire. The battle with Scylla had shaken the very foundation of Poseidon's kingdom. Atlantis was sinking. Well, according to Plato, it was the gods who caused Atlantis to sink as punishment for how immoral the people had become. Man, gods really seem to enjoy drowning immoral people. No, it's named after Heracles. That's why it's called Heracleon and not Herculeon. Interestingly enough, Greek skeleton warriors, or Spartoi, do not come from the remains of fallen soldiers. They are actually created by planting dragon teeth in soil. These enemies are called Kyries Wraiths. There were only ever two Kyries in Greek myth, and yet we encounter several more in this game. Also, these things shouldn't be a threat at all because the Kyries were actually incapable of killing people. Much like vultures, they just watch people die and then fed on their remains. These enemies are called Gurions. In Greek myth, there was only ever one Gurion, and he didn't have four arms on one body. He actually had either three heads or three separate bodies all standing on the same two legs. He also didn't have teleportation powers. Gurion was slain by Heracles, not Kratos. Harpies do not have ice powers. This... whatever it is, is not in Greek mythology. 
Erinus, the daughter of Thanatos, the god of death. No, Erinys is another name for the three Furies, whose parents are Gaia and Uranus. Thanatos never had any children. He did have some sisters, including the Curies I mentioned earlier, the spirits of violent death. Not sure why the devs didn't just make them the boss fight here instead. After the Great War with the Titans, the Oracle had foretold the demise of the Olympian gods and the destruction of Olympus. She saw that it would be brought about not by the hands of the Titans, who thirsted for revenge, but by the hands of a mortal, a marked warrior. I'm honestly surprised Zeus didn't just swallow the kid, considering that's what Greek deities seem to do when oracles make predictions like that. <laughs> The Piraeus lion wasn't really a live creature in mythology. It's actually just a famous statue. It's cool to see it getting some recognition, though. This skull of Ceres seems to have horns, even though Ceres weren't depicted with horns. I know this is gonna shock people, but Spartan spears were not capable of endlessly regenerating when thrown. For anyone wondering, yes, Boreas does carry a conch shell which can channel his powers. Though I have no idea why he'd leave it lying around in some shrine when he typically keeps it with him. Midas eventually managed to restore his daughter, but that doesn't happen in this game. I'm warning you! King Midas' golden touch applies to every part of his body, not just his hands. We know this because food and drink both turn to gold in his mouth. So, Kratos should be gold right now, and so should everything Midas is wearing, along with the ground he's currently standing barefoot on. It is not too late to turn back, Kratos. No good will come of this journey. The gods- I am done with the gods! Return to Olympus and leave me be. Why would there be a statue of Athena in Atlantis? Poseidon and Athena don't exactly get along, so I doubt he'd want that in his kingdom. The domain of death. A dark netherworld nestled between the land of the living and the realm of the dead. A purgatory ruled by the god of death. But according to Hesiod, Thanatos lives in the Underworld with his brother Hypnos. Pretty sure the Underworld is the land of the dead. Worshipped long before the Olympians, Thanatos, the god of death, dwelled within. For anyone wondering, Thanatos is indeed older than the Olympians. Brother, you are safe now. <laughs> Shit! You let this happen to me! You were supposed to protect me! The fact that Deimos has been here for about 30 years and yet his hair and beard are still nicely trimmed leads me to believe that Thanatos has taken it upon himself to cut Deimos' hair for him. However, according to Greek myth, when Thanatos cuts the hair of a mortal, they die. Yes, that's actually a thing, and Deimos is clearly still alive, so something ain't right here. This game gives Thanatos a lot of crow iconography, including having crows as some of his minions. But in mythology, Thanatos' animal symbol was actually a butterfly. 
The Oracle may have yet spoken truth. The marked warrior shall bring about the destruction of Olympus. This is honestly a pretty good Thanatos design. Also, props for giving Thanatos a sword instead of a scythe, since that's actually more accurate. We're still missing the inverted torch, though. Thanatos does not have an ultimate kaiju form. It's cool and all, but still inaccurate. Also, why hasn't his mother Nyx shown up to help? She showed up when his twin brother Hypnos was threatened by Zeus, so why doesn't she do the same for Thanatos? Favoritism is not healthy, Nyx. It is done. You have let go of that which made you mortal. Your ties to this world are severed. You are ready to be a god. Plenty of the gods have ties to the mortal world, whether through taking mortal lovers, having mortal children, Artemis with her huntresses, even Athena has an adopted mortal son named Erichthonius. It is not over. The gods will pay for this. Forgive me, brother. Well, more like second cousin if we go by the mythically accurate parentage. My brothers, we were forged in victory. Zeus says my brothers here, but it is later revealed that two of the gods he is speaking to are Hermes and Helios. Those two are not his brothers. Hermes is Zeus's son, and Helios is Zeus's cousin. What do you mean I'm taking him too literally? The mortal Kratos seeks to destroy all that I have wrought. These titans don't really resemble the actual titans in Greek mythology. The titans in Greek myth were human-looking, and they had their own outfits, weapons, and symbols, just like the Olympians did. But here they're a bunch of hulking kaiju. This is a common misconception, which is the result of people mixing up the Titans with the Gigantus, another group of deities the Olympians went to war with. So this is supposed to be the game where Kratos takes on all of the remaining Olympians. Freaking awesome premise, by the way. But what's weird is how few of them appear throughout the game. We never encounter Demeter, Hestia, Dionysus, Apollo, or Artemis. Artemis was in the first game, so where the hell is she now? There's also supposed to be dozens, if not hundreds, of minor gods living on Olympus, including, ironically, the mythological Kratos. Apparently this titan is supposed to be Epimetheus, which is a bit strange considering these are supposed to be the titans who originally fought against the Olympians in the Titanomachy, and in mythology, Epimetheus and his brother Prometheus actually joined Zeus's side in the Titanomachy. Also, Epimetheus is the titan of afterthought and representative of mankind. Not sure how that translates to being all rock-themed. Okay, that's an epic hippocampus design, but unfortunately, hippocampi in myth are simply creatures that are half horse, half fish. And sometimes they have wings, for some reason. Die. Apparently, this blue titan is supposed to be Oceanus, but Oceanus did not take part in the Titanomachy. 
This chain of balance is not a thing in mythology. Centaurs aren't exactly disciplined warriors, except for Chiron. Centaurs are typically just rampaging scoundrels who like to, how do I put this, put their wee-wees into women who don't want it. They're also not that large. Well, yeah, Poseidon. He's already killed two other gods of Olympus. What, did you just forget about that? Are you trying to say that Ares and Athena weren't gods of Olympus? Because they were. You have disrespected the gods for the last time, Kratos. <laughs> Poseidon does indeed have a chariot pulled by Hippocampi. However, it's supposed to be pulled by four Hippocampi, and I count at least five here in addition to the attacking ones. Also, Poseidon seems to have a crown comprised of crab legs, which is really more representative of the titan Oceanus, or the primordial god Pontus. The death of Olympus means the death of us all! Then prepare for your death, Poseidon. The gods bleed red blood in this game, despite the fact that deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. Poseidon's death in this game seems to cause all the water of Greece to go haywire. I guess the idea is it's because Poseidon is no longer keeping it under control. But Poseidon isn't the only water deity. Are Oceanus, Tethys, Pontus, Phorcus, Hydros, Ceto, Glaucus, Triton, the Naiads, the Nereids, the Oceanids, and all the river gods just gonna sit back and let this happen? You know, if you wanted this kind of imagery, you could have just had it be caused by Aegeon, the god of storms. He was allied with the Titans in the first Titanomachy, so it would have made perfect sense to have him causing storms here. Olympus is literally being invaded, and yet Zeus is all alone instead of being surrounded by Nike, Bia, Zealous, and Kratos. These are supposed to be his most loyal and elite agents. You really can't find good help these days. The hands of death could not defeat me. Well, maybe they would've if only Hades, Thanatos, and Hermes did their freaking jobs once in a while. I can hold on no longer! You have the wings of Icarus. Just fly back up. No, oh, wait, you can't, because in this game, they can only glide instead of free-flying like in the myth. <laughs> Did Kratos just randomly fall straight into the underworld? That's not how it works. Or am I to assume he has died yet again, in which case I refer you to things that were already said in two of my previous videos. Yo, why is the River Styx attacking Kratos? She's his mother! Somebody call social services! Also, since Kratos just took a dip in the river sticks, his body should now be impenetrable, as evidenced by the origins of Achilles. Zeus will not fall as easily as Ares. To destroy the king of the gods, you must seek the source of his strength. The flame of Olympus. There is no flame of Olympus in Greek mythology. There's a hearth of Olympus, sure, but that's a different thing entirely. You. I have 
suffered enough, Spartan. Pirithus seems to be sitting in a chair here, whereas in the myth, he was stuck sitting on a rock. Some say a bench, but definitely not a chair, since Theseus was sitting there with him for some time, and there's certainly not enough space for two people on that chair. What are you doing? Cerberus does not breathe fire. There was a playwright named Euphorion who said his eyes flashed fire, but that's about it. <laughs> According to Euripides, Pirithus was eventually killed by Hades feeding him to Cerberus. It's pretty close to what happens here, since he's still killed by a Cerberus knockoff, but still different. Pirithus did not come into possession of Apollo's bow at any point. Where the hell even is Apollo in this entire series? You did not have to complete any trials to receive an audience with the judges of the dead. Being judged was standard procedure after dying in Greek myth. Kratos uses the wings of Icarus directly above a literal smoking fire here, and yet the wax holding the feathers together doesn't melt like it did when Icarus flew too close to the sun. The many living statue enemies in this game are called either Stone Talos or Bronze Talos. But Talos wasn't the name of an entire race of living statues, it was the name of one particular gigantic bronze man who defended the island of Crete. The name for the race of living statues in Greek myth would be automatons. Uh, uh, ghost of Sparta! The forge of Hephaestus was in Mount Olympus, not the underworld. There was only ever one Cerberus in mythology, and yet we encounter several in this game. <laughs> Hades' weapon of choice was a bident, not a set of... those things. Also, his helmet is supposed to make him invisible. This game seems to have replaced Hades' Doom Eternal style design from the first game with... Okay, let's be honest, another Doom Eternal style design. Again, Hades isn't some monster, he's just as human-looking as the other Olympians. The souls of the dead were not contained inside of Hades. Souls who make it past the river Styx go to either Elysium, Asphodel, or Tartarus. Souls that don't make it past either end up trapped in one of the underworld rivers, or wander the shores of the dead until Charon feels generous. Uh, you know, Kratos, I wasn't always like this. A monster. I was once the most prized craftsman in all of Olympus. Zeus rewarded me with my marriage to the beautiful Aphrodite. My mother Hera bragged my talent. Nope. Hephaestus was born with defects, and Hera was so annoyed by his defects that she literally tossed him off the top of Mount Olympus. He later got revenge on her by trapping her on a golden throne, and Zeus had to give him Aphrodite as ransom to release Hera. Not exactly a reward. Worst of all, 
He took my beloved daughter, Pandora. My reason for living. I spend my time here trying to recreate her. I fail again and again. Well, maybe that's because you're clearly trying to recreate her using bronze when the myths say she was made using either clay or marble. clearly isn't guiding the sun across the sky right now, and yet somehow the sun is still up. There was only ever one chimera in Greek mythology, but we encounter several more than that in this game. The Chimera was slain by Bellerophon, not Kratos. Kratos, I have not forgotten the debt I owe you. <laughs> save me now, as you once saved me from Atlas. <laughs> and I promise to repay you in full. If you wish to repay me, tell me where I can find the Flame of Olympus. You will never defeat Zeus, Spartan. <clears throat> you will forfeit your life in trying. Of all the lives you should worry about, Helios, mine is not one of them. Feel the power of the sun! Helios is known as the Guardian of Oaths in Greek culture, so it's kinda weird to see him make a promise and then almost immediately break it. <laughs> Look who it is! Kratos, the ghost of Sparta. The fallen god. The cursed mortal. Hermes does not have his caduceus, his cape, or his winged helmet in this game. He also wasn't depicted with flaming hair. That's more of a Loki thing from Norse mythology. To contain these evils, Zeus commissioned Hephaestus to build a vessel strong enough to hold them. Fear. Greed. Hate. He locked them all away in the box, in hopes that they would never again infect his reign. Well, that wasn't the plan in the myths, seeing as he intentionally got Pandora to open it as a way to punish humanity. Wait, even in this game series, he intentionally helped Kratos open it. This line just doesn't make sense. Hermes' winged shoes are supposed to be able to run across the air itself, but they don't seem capable of that here. I thought Spartans fought with honor, and yet you seek to kill me when I have no way to defend myself? Not fair! This from the guy who murdered Argus while he was sleeping just for doing his job. Hermes' death in this game unleashes disease on mankind, suggesting that Hermes was the god of health or medicine. But this is actually a misconception. The Greek gods of health and medicine were Apollo, Asclepius, and Hygieia, not Hermes. Also, the fact that both Hermes and Thanatos are dead at this point means no mortals should be able to die anymore. We know this because in the tale of Sisyphus, he tracked Thanatos for a while, and nobody was able to die during that time. I let that slide in the Ghost of Sparta video, because you could technically argue that Hermes is also capable of bringing souls to the underworld, but now they're both dead, so... yeah. Bravo! 
Bravo! Our hero has arrived. Applause for another bastard child of Zeus. Destroy him. Hello, brother. This is not between us, Hercules. Oh my god, Heracles, son of a- <sighs> Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. Also, why would Hercules be taking orders from Hera? Those two hate each other. By the way, fun fact, Hercules in this game is voiced by the same actor who played Hercules in the 1995 show. Nice. Isn't it? You were always Zeus's favorite. I'm pretty sure Athena was the favorite, since she's the only one who didn't get punished after the attempted coup. Not convinced. How about this? While you were being crowned the god of war, I was sent to find an apple. Three apples, actually. Perhaps he did allow me to kill the Nemean lion, but he made your name known amongst the people. A fierce warrior, a killer made hero, a man made a god. But all of that applies to Heracles as well. His name was known amongst the people to an insane degree. They even referenced that in Ghost of Sparta with the city that was named after him. Heracles was definitely known as a fierce warrior, and a killer made a hero, and a man who became a god. But this time, brother, this time I will destroy you. Call it my thirteenth and final labor. Soon I will become the god of war and claim the throne for myself. Okay, we need to talk about the timeline here because it is a freaking mess. First of all, Heracles, or Hercules, is supposed to be the great-great-grandson of Perseus. But in God of War 2, which takes place just a few days before this, we encountered Perseus. And he honestly looked even younger than Hercules does here. Second... Hercules is already the god of strength, so not sure why he wants to be god of war. Third, Hercules says this will be his 13th labor, but that would mean he completed his other 12 labors. How did he slay the Hydra for his second labor if Kratos slew it in God of War 1? If he completed his 10th labor, that would mean he killed Gurion, but Gurion still appeared in Ghost of Sparta. How did he get the golden apples for his 11th labor without help from Atlas, since Atlas is chained up underneath the earth instead of holding up the sky next to the Hesperides tree? Got a whole lot of stuff here that doesn't add up. The Nemean lion skin was made into a more cloak-like outfit, not a helmet and a pair of cestae. Also, Hercules doesn't have his signature club or poison arrows in this game. Kratos breaks the Nemean helmet here, but the Nemean lion skin is supposed to be impenetrable. The plural for Cestus is Cestai, thank you very much. Yes, yes, of course. We'll need the Omphalus stone. With it, I'll make you a weapon. I have weapons. Ah, but not like this. This weapon will give you the retribution you so rightly deserve. The stone rests in the pit of Tartarus. The Omphalus stone was actually found in Delphi, and is still there to this day. <laughs> Kratos walks straight into Tartarus without encountering any of the Hecatonkeries that are supposed to be guarding it. Yes, I know one of them got turned into a living prison in a prequel game, but there are still two other Hecatonkeries, so where the heck are they? The murderer of Gaia! Enters my tomb, Kronos! Hey, Kronos is finally in Tartarus, like in the myth. He still hasn't been chopped into pieces, though. Enough! Time to end this! <laughs> Trust me, eating you will be more unpleasant for me.
Why was the Omphalus stone inside of Kronos' stomach? Kronos puked that stone up the same time he puked up his five kids. What, did he eat it again? Really? This from the guy who castrated his father and devoured his own children? I've never seen such a lack of self-awareness. As I promised. This nemesis whip is not a thing in Greek mythology. You think this garden is not protected? Hera does have a garden in Greek myth, but it's the Hesperides garden and it's not on Mount Olympus. death seems to result in the death of all plant life, but Hera isn't the goddess of plants. That would be Demeter. Hera is the goddess of marriage, so I guess what would actually happen is everyone would start getting divorced? Zeus did not commission the labyrinth from Daedalus. That was King Minos. The stinger of Scorpius is supposed to be venomous, not ice-inducing. Also, Scorpius wasn't killed by Kratos, he was transformed into a constellation after his battle with Orion. Please, don't do it, Spartan! Creative. But unfortunately, the labyrinth wasn't a giant Rubik's Cube in Olympus filled with various challenges. It was a maze somewhere in Crete. Pandora! What has he done? Pandora was never a little girl. She was created by the gods in the shape of a beautiful grown woman in order to be an irresistible gift for Epimetheus. She's also supposed to have ruby red lips. Also, in this game, she's a key to unlock the Flame of Olympus to get to Pandora's box. Obviously, none of that is in the myth. In the myth, she's simply a woman who opened the box. <laughs> Zeus shoots a lot of thunderbolts at Kratos, despite the fact that Hephaestus is no longer around to make them, and apparently hasn't been to Olympus in a long time. This game later reveals that hope came out of the box at the same time that the evils came out. 
In the myths, though, hope was the one thing that remained in the box when that happened. Gaia is the living embodiment of the Earth itself, so if she's dead, there should be no Earth left. I honestly don't know whether to call this inaccurate or not. It's not like Zeus has ever been killed in mythology, so I guess there's no way of knowing whether he would have some kind of after-death wraith form. In the time before the Titans, before the gods of Olympus, a great battle was waged. No, it wasn't. There was no fighting at all before the Titans were born. The wrath of the Primordials. There were Primordials, sure, but there was no wrath. They were actually just constantly mating to create more Primordials and other beings. The very beings who forged the Earth. Raged out of control for an eternity. This seems to suggest that the Earth and ocean and such were created when the Primordials died. This is not the case. Primordials are literal living locations and personifications, and the only one who ever died was Uranus. Also, the Ocean Primordial appears female here, but the first Ocean Primordial was Pontus, and Pontus was male. And from this rage, this madness of war, the Furies were brought forth. No, the Furies were born from the blood that spilled during the castration of Uranus, which happened after the Titans were born. There are some alternate tellings, but this is not one of them. When Zeus came to power, he found he had little to fear from the sisters. The Furies sought retribution only for those whom they deemed guilty. The first of these traitors was Aegean the Hecatonchores. According to the Iliad, this guy actually has two names. Aegeon is the name that mortals call him, whereas the gods refer to him as Briarius. Since this game is narrated by Gaia, who is not a mortal, she should be calling him Briarius. When the brute pledged a blood oath to Zeus, only to later betray the king of the gods, the Furies were quick to take action. Okay, the myths behind this are a bit inconsistent. You could say this is inaccurate because according to Homer, Aegeon was so loyal to Zeus that at one point he stopped the gods from rebelling against him. However, later Roman poets would describe Aegeon as an enemy of the gods and say that he tried to find ways to bring the Titans back to power. So... It depends on which version you want to follow, I guess. The sisters relentlessly hunted the Aegean, and upon capturing the creature, tortured him without mercy. For the Furies believed death was too kind for this Oathbreaker. So, where the heck are the other two Hecatonchores, Cotus and Yegus? Are they just gonna do nothing while their own brother gets tortured for a heck of a long time? Heck. Megara, Tisiphone, and Orcos bleed red blood in this game, despite the fact that deities in Greek mythology are supposed to have golden ichor running through their veins. You are a worthless mortal! <laughs> 
Megara does not command an army of parasites. Certainly not ones that are capable of creating zombie-like minions that are shown later on. The Greek deities don't really have blood oaths. When they want to make a binding oath, they do something called swearing by the waters of the river Styx. If we're just talking about oaths in general here, then technically the first guy to break an oath was Kronos, when he reneged on his promise to free the Cyclopes and Hecatonchres from Tartarus after he overthrew his father. This whole prison made from the body of a Hecatonchres is such an epic and creative idea. But unfortunately, this never happened in the myths. are deities, you know. So, how is Kratos able to kill them? This game takes place before Kratos got the god-killing powers from Pandora's box, so what gives? In the Chains of Olympus video, you guys said it was because he had the Gauntlet of Zeus, but there is a distinct lack of Zeus gauntlets in this game. Are the Furies supposed to be mortal in this game? If that's the case, then not only is that inaccurate, but it raises more questions, considering they constantly call Kratos mortal in a derogatory way. I will not be ruined by a mortal! You are a worthless mortal! Die, mortal! You are a mere mortal! You are but a mortal. There are no elephant-headed monsters in Greek mythology. The only time Circe poisoned a water supply was when she got jealous of a nymph named Scylla and put a potion in her bathwater which transformed her into the infamous monster many of us know. I don't believe that is the case here, otherwise there'd be a whole village of Scyllas. For those who seek the truth, the heat of Ares' fire has no burn. The Greek gods don't just leave powers lying around for anybody to grab and use. Sure, the gods bestowed several gifts, weapons, and abilities to certain heroes, but they did so selectively and in person. This enemy type is called a satyr general. As I've stated before, satyrs were not disciplined warriors, so they definitely didn't have generals. And there also weren't minotaur-sized breeds of satyrs. While Gorgons were certainly depicted with snakes for hair, and sometimes with snakes emerging from other areas, their heads were not snake heads. Especially not hooded snake heads, since hooded snakes were never really a thing in Greece. Take the ice of Poseidon and you will find your path. Poseidon is not the god of ice. That would be Keone, daughter of Boreas, the North Wind. Dude, the Oracle was not heavily guarded by monsters and challenges. There are several stories of Greek people talking to oracles, which is never a good idea, by the way. Don't do that. You'll end up dying or marrying your mom. And when they did do it, it was a fairly simple process. It did not require a life-threatening adventure. Why is the Chimera breathing ice? The Chimera breathes fire. They even had them breathe fire in God of War 3. What happened? <laughs> it seems these giant mechanical snakes Kratos is traversing are supposed to be a reference to Python. 
Now, Python's exact size and appearance and even gender are pretty inconsistent, but he's definitely not supposed to be this big. Also, he's not mechanical. And there's only one of him, yet there are three here. Props for having him be connected to the Delphic Oracle, though. That's straight out of the myths. Manticores are very interesting creatures. They originate from Persia, and in that version they have human faces, lion bodies, three rows of teeth, red fur, and a tail covered in poisonous quills. Now you may be thinking, well then, this version is clearly inaccurate. But there are Greek versions, and later depictions have made their faces more lion-like, replaced the quills with a full scorpion tail, and given them wings. So, we're good here. That's not quite what the Temple of Delphi looked like. Hurry! Before the Master approaches! You! We have given you all you need for success, and yet you still fail us! The statues were to be completed by now! It is a massive task you have set before us, Master. My brothers, they... they need food and rest. You have not been asked to speak! And who will be next? You! You there! You are now charged with the task of completing the statues. As you wish. We hope your work is better than that of your friend here. We can no longer stand the sight of you. You make us sick. This man is supposed to be Castor. Castor and his brother Pollux were known for being extremely kind and generous. Does not seem to be the case here. They were also adventurers throughout their lives. They didn't work for the Oracle at Delphi. These enemies are called Siren Sibyls. Sibyl is basically another word for oracle, and none of the sirens were oracles in Greek myth. Plus, sirens don't have thunder powers. Similar to God of War 3, there are automaton enemies in this game which are called Fire Talos, Ice Talos, and Thunder Talos. And once again, I must point out that Talos is the name of one specific automaton, not the entire race. Aletheia was not an oracle. She was the spirit of truth and sincerity. Return when you have brought appropriate sacrifice. I have come to see the oracle, and that is what I intend to do. I would have liked to hear your story, warrior. It is a shame you fail to see reason. Remove him. <sighs> we have to find a better slave trader. Castor and Pollux were indeed twins, but not conjoined twins. We will not tolerate your impudence. You will not see her. Castor and Pollux are supposed to be the protectors of guests and travelers. Kratos is currently both. These guys are not doing their jobs. Your desire to see the Oracle will get you killed. That's the most mythically accurate thing that's been said in this whole series. But an innocent. <laughs> uh. 
Castor and Pollux weren't killed. They were granted immortality and became the constellation known as Gemini. This amulet is not a thing in Greek mythology. The Furies infect your mind because you run from your oath to Ares. They will stop at nothing should you resist. So the Shade speaks the truth. The intentions of Orkos are pure. Orkos? But he is a Fury. Not in the myths he isn't. Orkos, or Horkos, is actually a living curse who is inflicted on those who swear false oaths. And he doesn't hang out with the Furies, but with the Goddess of Justice, whose name I don't think I can say on YouTube. Why Ares needed you, why he still needs you. This creature is a Lestrigonian, which is a bit weird considering Lestrigonians are known for sinking ships rather than helping them. I was brought forth by the joining of the War God and the Fury Queen. No, you weren't. Horkos was a child of Eris. It does say in the legend that the Furies aided in his birth, but none of them were his actual mother. Ares never even hooked up with any Furies, and they don't have a queen. I sought counsel with Aletheia. It was she who revealed to me the plot of Ares to overthrow Zeus. But he needed the perfect warrior. Ares molded you to take down the very walls of Olympus. To make you beholden only to him, Ares and my mothers devised three blood tasks. So basically, Ares was planning to create a warrior to help him overthrow Zeus, and the Furies were helping him. However, in the myths, the main thing the Furies are against and punish people for is when people betray or kill their own parents. And yet, now they're helping Ares do exactly that. Apparently, that's an Impusa. Impusa are vampiric women with flaming hair, one brass leg, and one donkey leg. Here, they have mantis limbs and what looks like poison coming out of their heads. Also, the Impusa serve the goddess Hecate, not the Furies. The sooner we get past Telos, the happier I'll be. They say the great Archimedes built that statue for Apollo. Archimedes was an incredibly brilliant scientist and inventor from real-world history who designed pumps, pulleys, war machines, etc. But never a gigantic statue of Apollo. In fact, no such statue has ever existed in Delos. <laughs> My sources say that these women are Amazons. Now, I was originally going to call this inaccurate because Kratos is currently on the island of Delos, and the Amazons are said to reside close to the Black Sea, which is very far from Delos. But there are myths that say the Amazons are daughters of Ares, so you could say that perhaps Ares directly sent these Amazons after Kratos in this game. However, I'm still going to point out that Amazons have never been able to command harpies in Greek mythology. Oh, and some of you might be wondering why she has dark skin despite being from Greek culture. The thing is, though, the Black Sea is actually right next to Turkey, so some of the Amazons being that race is plausible. You leave an army in disarray. Return to us, General. Lead us to victory. You do not exist. You are of my mind. Return to your roots. Return to who you are, Spartan. <laughs> we only mean to bring you home. My home is in Sparta! Strange how Tisiphone has the power of mental manipulation in this game, when in the myths, Electo was the fury who would drive people mad. Tisiphone is supposed to be the fury who punishes murderers, 
So, it'd make a lot more sense to have her torment Kratos by reminding him of everyone he's slaughtered, rather than constantly tempting him with rewards. Come, my lovely. If pain is what he shows us, then pain is what he shall receive! Tisiphone often summons a daemon to aid her in battle, but she's not known for that in the myths. She's also supposed to have a blood-red robe. Your methods fail us, Megira. I will take care of him. The designs of the Furies here are quite different from Greek culture. Here, there are three decent-looking young women, each with their own unique monstrous traits. In mythology, there are three hideous old crones, with wings, whips, and serpents protruding from their bodies. You will return. Death first. I should have done this a long time ago. Orcos! This is what you align with, Spartan? This time, you will fail. Okay, this isn't myth-related, but I have to ask, what is going on with some of the missing sounds in this game? It's so weird. <laughs> this duplicating stone is not in Greek mythology. That actually is a famous quote from Archimedes. Funny thing is, though, it was referring to a lever. So why not have this item be a lever rather than a chisel? That's not how Archimedes died. Archimedes was killed by a Roman soldier in Syracuse after the city was taken. It's actually a pretty cool story, considering it was his war machines that killed many Romans during the battle, and the reason he was killed was because he refused to stop working on a math diagram when he was confronted. Nerd! The Greek oracles did not all use the same pair of eyes. Heck, there were often multiple oracles at a time, so that would be a very difficult system. Come, sisters. We will break him within the walls of Hecatonkeres. Is this supposed to be where the Furies live? Because they are typically said to reside in the Underworld, and this Hecatonkeres prison is very clearly above ground. In time you will forget. All that you have lost can be yours once again. If this is what keeps you in service to Lord Ares, then this is what you shall have. Alecto seems very level-headed in this game. In the myths, though, Alecto's name literally translates to unceasing anger. I am the queen of the Furies! Yes, in this game, Electo is also Charybdis? That is definitely not in mythology. Charybdis is a monstrous daughter of Poseidon who always resides at the Mycenaean Strait with Scylla, and Electo is a completely separate being. <laughs> Was that a reference to Tisiphone's role in the myths? Okay, cool. <laughs> Electo bleeds black blood in this game, despite the fact that uh, I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. 
This game takes place in Greece, and yet a whole lot of the soldiers seem to be wielding scimitars, which were not Greek weapons. Those typically came from the Middle East or Asia. Argus is supposed to have 100 eyes, yet I only count about 12 here. Also, Greek artwork depicts Argus as a man-shaped creature with eyes all over his body. Not this... whatever this is, which only seems to have eyes on its head area. Also, also, Argus should already be dead at this point in Greek mythology. How do I know this? Well, let me tell you. See, Argus's role in Greek mythology was to guard Io, one of Zeus's lovers whom Hera had imprisoned due to her jealousy. During that time, Zeus sent Hermes to free Io, and Hermes ended up killing Argus in the process. Io then fled to Egypt, where she gave birth to Zeus's son Epaphus, who, as the myths state, would eventually become the founder of Memphis, Egypt. Now, Memphis, Egypt was founded around 2925 BC, and in God of War I, which was before before this, we go to Athens during the Peloponnesian War, which began around 431 BC. Therefore, Argus should have died about 2,500 years before this game. Yeah, I went to all that research just to make that one nitpick. You bet your sweet bippy I did. this game, Medusa's gaze only causes people to freeze in place instead of turning them to stone like in the myths. Now you might say this is due to hardware limitations, and to that I say, shut up. But who would Kratos be making sacrifices to for this to happen? Sacrifices are made to the gods, and later parts of this game reveal that the gods are against what Kratos is currently doing. Is this door itself supposed to be some kind of rogue deity? There is no such deity in Greek mythology. Closest thing would probably be Janus, the god of doorways, but even he is from Roman mythology. Is this supposed to be the Horseman of Death? That character is a deity from the Christian Book of Revelations. There is no such being in Greek mythology. Also, there's only supposed to be one Horseman of Death, but we encounter several in this game. Oh, and he's supposed to have a scythe and ride a pale horse, not a brown one. How is landing on some sharp pieces of wood able to kill Kratos? Actually, come to think of it, how is anything in this game able to kill Kratos? This game takes place between God of War 1 and 2, so Kratos is currently a god with godly powers. Did all these basic human Greeks open Pandora's box? Did Argus open it? Are these wooden stakes godly weapons? How does any of this work? I know this is gonna shock people, but ancient Greek buildings didn't really have giant circular saws zooming around constantly. Why would Argus just randomly attack everyone, including the people he was sent to defend? Argus isn't a mindless monster, he's very loyal and follows orders. That's why Hera trusts him. Argos was slain by Hermes, not... whoever this guy is, it's actually never revealed. Who knows, maybe it is Hermes. Thank you. 
Argus was not created by Hera, he was a child of Gaia. Ceryx was indeed a messenger similar to his father, Hermes, but he wasn't the messenger of Olympus. That was... well, Hermes. Ceryx himself was a lord of Attica and a herald for the Eleusinians. <laughs> 